It's flying too high. They're going to lose control. So this is going to take them ages to gain momentum. Sail GP. One guy's really shining today at 15 years old. It's just incredible. Man, let's face it, they'll probably be in these teams very, very soon. Every point counts, and I decided to push as hard as I could. You know, I'm the one flying the boat. The Australians make it two in a row. God, I feel bad. They sound so much better than us all week. Terribly sorry for him if he's feeling bad about winning. You need to really show the kids just because things get hard. It's no reason to throw the towel in. Pretty high there, they're over the front. They crash down just on the finish line. That is last place. Also a disappointing result for New Zealand. They haven't cracked the F50 code yet. Hey, Freddie, well, it's the first day of the Chicago Grand Prix. It's scorching hot. The temperatures have risen to over 40 degrees Celsius. And if there's a crew that's going to be feeling the heat right now, it has to be the New Zealand Sail GP team. Yes, Stevie, over a year ago, in my opinion, this crew took on one of their biggest challenges. The F-50 really exposes you as a sailor because all of the boats are identical. It allows the winning team to prove they are the best sailing nation in the world, without a doubt. Now it's actually quite interesting going back into a one design fleet. You know, there's obviously a lot of little things uh, on these boats that are just designed to, to make them even, uh, to make the playing field even. And it's actually quite, um, I think, cool for the sport to have the boats. It's, it's quite a hard way to sail. But Stevie, we're into race three of the second Grand Prix of the year, and the Kiwis haven't stepped onto any podiums yet in Sail GP. And this is a team that's used to winning absolutely everything. This is a very different sort of a discipline of sailing compared to what we do in the America's Cup. It's a very tricky, difficult environment. Uh, things are changing a lot, all the time. You really are competing in this league on equal terms with every other team. Everyone has the same technology. Everyone has access to the data. And all of a sudden, now it's a real test of which athlete is better. And the human factor is making the difference. There's nowhere to hide. It's, it's all down to talent and the tool at your disposal. And we often say that um, a bad sailor will blame their boat, um, but in Sail GP, you don't have that option to blame the boat. Well, Freddie, race three is really important for the Kiwis. We saw they won the first race of the day, but now this is their chance to climb up the leaderboard. But it's neck and neck with the mighty Australian teams and we're going into the last gate and the stakes could not be higher. And here come the Kiwis and the Aussies to battle out for third. It's tight, the New Zealand boat needs to stay in that yellow circle. Now could now be a protest back from Australia. Oh boy, how can he sail that far? Every point counts going into the final day. So the fact that he really stuck it in there at that mark, spun the boat super fast and then held Australia up was a really nice move. That's New Zealand crossing the line in third position. It's Australia in fourth, but that was really, really close at that last gate. I think there could be a protest from Australia. How far up the line does he have to go? This umpire's man. It's ridiculous. That one point of the end could be pretty vital. The umpires have just called it, and yes, it is a penalty on New Zealand. That means the results must switch, and Australia's going to finish one spot ahead of New Zealand. I really hope this decision doesn't put New Zealand off, but these are the moments where you have to maintain your focus. This is the Kiwi team that I want to see, and it is a considerable improvement from the team we saw last year. When you think of the best sailors in the world, you think of Pete and Bled. When we heard that they were coming to sail GP, we're thinking they're gonna walk in and start winning races. Pete and Bled definitely have that status in sailing. I think the New Zealand team struggled to crack the F50 in their season one because in the past, the New Zealand team have always done something different. And that way of doing something different is what has won them to America's Cups. So they came into Sail GP and they tried to do something different and that really didn't help them crack the code. I've got to say, I'm a bit underwhelmed with that first race from Pete Burling and Blair Took. Superstars we know, and I know it's just one race, but Oh, these guys are so good. I was expecting to see them coming out guns blazing from the start. And they crossed the finishing line in sixth place. 
I think a lot of people were surprised when the Kiwis entered the South GP League and they really approached it with a totally blank sheet of paper. So they didn't look at the way any of the other teams were really doing it. They simply did it their own way. And I've got to say, most of the things they did differently just didn't work. We're halfway through the season, and here we've got New Zealand again at the back of the fleet. They're finishing second to last. We're expecting this crew to perform from the start, but, well, I don't know, the boats, they're all the same, identical boats, and we're really seeing this team struggling. And I just don't think any of us anticipated this. Well, I think this is going to be it for the New Zealand Sail GP team. They're going to close out their campaign with another very average performance. They seem to have finished fifth at almost every event throughout the season. Just wonder what's happened to this team. We were expecting fireworks from the start. If somebody had have told me that the Kiwis would not finish on the podium for the entire of season two, I would have said there's no way. There's no way that will happen. Race five, and for the first time since they joined Sail GP, the Kiwi team is almost touching their first ever final. Nice, guys. Have a good one. Yep. So it's pretty simple, really. All the Kiwis have to do is finish sixth or better. The only team that can steal their spot in the final is Australia's Sail GP team. And for that to happen, the Australians would have to win and New Zealand would have to finish seventh or worse. And to be honest, I think the chances of that happening are pretty slim. All right, here we go again. We felt like we were in a great position at the start and uh, thought we were a lot later than we were. So we thought we were going to be able to go at full speed right straight through the line. And then that, that's the best chance of you know, getting the best start at that, the windward end if there is space, which there was. The boats are going to turn down. We can see Australia foiling. Here come New Zealand. They're coming in hot. How's the timing for Burling? He looks cool. Oh, he stuffs the bow. Is that a too big a mistake? He's losing the speed. It's going to go clear. Australia trying to find a gap. Line goes clear. The three protagonists are fighting at the top oh. end of the line here. Looks like New Zealand have stuffed it. They're going to be blocked out. And has New Zealand thrown it out the window with that start? The New Zealand team, they struggle to have the right speed at the start of the gun. So it doesn't matter if you're in front of the other boats, if you're not going as fast as everyone at the start of the gun, it's all over from there. And once you're in the pack, you're in what we call a vacuum. All the wind just vanishes, and, and that's what happened to the New Zealand team. Crucial time now in the race. This is the first chance for the boats to choose different directions. Canada will go straight, but New Zealand top of screen. They're blocked by all those other boats. They will not be able to turn until everyone else does. You know, we knew we had to get back in, in front of the Spanish, so we took a bit of risk, and they uh, lost another boat to the, the Danish in that race. But no, it's um, yeah, a tricky one. The Kiwis really almost throwing this one away. If the Aussies come in first, they're going to have 33 points, and that is going to nudge them off of that podium. And they're off the foils. Oh, Look mercy. how slow they are. Surely not another Race 5 disaster for this New Zealand crew. And it will be the Australians with a masterful job in Race 5. Tom Slingsby and company punch their ticket into the grand final. Oh, he's got an incredible sense of timing, that man, hasn't he? And I fear time is running out yep. for the Kiwis. Look at, Look at them out the back. It's just not going to happen, Todd. What a disappointing race because they had it in their hands and effectively they've just thrown it out. Look at that, dejected oh, Burling. Look at him, he can't believe it again. They're and just not delivering. I just don't know when it's going to finally happen for the Kiwis. For me, it's hard to believe that this is the same crew that won the last two America's Cups. Yet another success, another hammer blow delivered by the Kiwis. They have powered into a 4-0 lead in the America's Cup match. Whenever it was, 2017, I think, um, when we won the America's Cup for, for Team New Zealand. That was a um, pretty incredible time for all, and that's um, pretty pretty uh, special memories. Obviously sailing uh, AC50 at that stage, which is, I suppose, original uh, spec of what's now evolved into the, the F50. The first thing there is that the AC boats weren't F50, so they were quite different, although they come from the same skeleton. So although that the boat looks very similar, it actually took quite a 
a lot of different skills um, to manage that boat. But yeah, it was an amazing uh, experience. We raced Pete and Blair in the final, and yeah, look, they just they did an incredible job. They were sailing well and look thoroughly deserved to win, and the results did the talking. You know, as fascinating and cool as the America's Cup is, and don't get me wrong, I'm a huge fan of it, clearly. The frustration is that as soon as it's over, you never know what's happening. I was just racing in the last America's Cup final, and for almost a year afterwards, any time some of my friends or sponsors or family asked, oh, where's the next one? What's the boat? You couldn't tell them an answer. It just seemed unbelievable. You know, you just have this huge momentous moment, the big Super Bowl grand final, and then no one knows anything for a year after. The problem the America's Cup has is that it happens every four years or every three years, and it doesn't have a continuity. So in order to commercialize the product, you have to have continuity. Well, Larry Allison and I started talking about a better way to deliver uh, professional sailing. Larry and Russell had this um, vision of how the sport needed to evolve. So we could create a sailing product or, or a championship, an entertainment product that, would, that could be commercially viable and that would continue in time. So all the teams in that America's Cup actually signed this agreement with the exception of Team New Zealand. And what happened? Team New Zealand won. So everything went down the drain. And then Oracle Team USA, which was Larry's America's Cup team, started to pack. But then one day, all of a sudden, Larry and Russell started speaking and they said, hold on, why don't we create a new sailing league? Sail GP is setting out to redefine sailing. It will be racing at its very best, fueled by athletes, powered by nature. For our inaugural season, we will stage events in Sydney, San Francisco, New York, in England and Cowes, onto our final event in Marseille. So when we started to think about this, one of the keys was we need a regularity of events. And to do that, you need to solve the logistics. You need to be able to ship these boats around the world. So the boats had to fit into containers. You know, it's amazing to see how They've put the boats together in a way now that they can get assembled, desembled so quickly and actually stay in one piece. I got the call you know, from Russell Coots to start looking at some numbers with Andy Thompson and figuring out what the model could look like. And we did everything in a period of nine months. So it was absolutely crazy. I mean, the idea with SailGP was really simple from the beginning. It was just making sailing a lot more exciting. More exciting for the sailors, more exciting for the fans more exciting for the commercial partners, more exciting for the cities. So we're trying to have a frequency of event that is as a minimum once a month. But the dream, the vision is eventually, if you had a magic wand, you know, you turn on your TV on Sunday afternoon at 2 p.m. and every Sunday you have a race. 